Hello, I'm Gaia Vince. Welcome to my home museum. Today's object is a staple food in almost every nation, and yet most places had never even heard of it until a few centuries ago. You can't see it growing, you can't eat it without cooking it, and yet it's the world's fourth most important crop. It's the potato. Now, potatoes are native tubers from South America, but the wild plant contains toxins that survive cooking. So the Andean people who ate them had to learn by watching native vicuña, which eat clays um, to absorb the toxins. And they made a clay and water sauce to dip the potatoes in. Over time, the Inca cultivated less toxic varieties of potatoes, and they experimented in these giant, high-altitude, fully irrigated agricultural arenas called moray to breed types that were resistant to frost or uh, required less rainfall or tolerated warmer temperatures. I mean, it's kind of amazing because people often talk about domestication as something fairly unintentional, a kind of semi-guided evolutionary process whereby farmers select the biggest and healthiest crops to plant, and from this emerges the diversity that we enjoy today. But I have visited one of these remarkable moray in Peru, just outside Cusco, and I can only describe it as a pre-Columbian scientific laboratory where the Inca deliberately created hundreds of new varieties which helped make the potato a dependable, highly nutritious staple for the indigenous people. And they also made a kind of freeze-dried sort of noodle from it called chuño, which could be stored for decades at a time. Once the potato was introduced to Europe, it transformed the continent's fortunes. And that's because compared to grains, potatoes are far more productive per field acre. Because if a seed head grows too big on wheat or rice, the plant can't stand up. But tubers grow underground where they can grow enormous. And hidden underground, they're also hard to tax or steal or burn during periods of social unrest. Potatoes are also relatively easy to grow, especially if they're propagated as clones from a bit of the tuber. And they're extremely nutritious. So smallholders began to grow potatoes on their fallow land, and this effectively doubled Europe's food supply in terms of calories. Before the potato and intensive fertilisation, the average European peasant ate less per day than a hunting and gathering society in Africa, and it suffered frequently devastating famines. The introduction of potatoes liberated the continent from famine, and it increased the general health and survival of the people. For example, the, the average height of people grew by about half an inch. The population in Europe exploded on the back of potatoes, and this provided the healthy workforce that then supplied the Industrial Revolution. It was also thanks to the potato that a handful of European nations were able to dominate the world for the past few centuries. Dependency on a clone staple, however, does leave a population vulnerable, and the potato blight that hit Ireland destroyed its main food source. The British government's response was appalling, resulting in the death of a million people from famine there and the emigration of a further two million, which devastated Ireland's population. Even today, blight, climate change, poor soils continue to threaten our potatoes. And part of the reason for this is that despite the hundreds of varieties grown in Peru and Chile, most of us rely on just a handful. It could be our undoing, 